Welcome back. In this final video in the scripting and logging module, we're going to be looking at adding logging to scripts. So in general, it's good practice to log as much detail as possible to help with reference and debugging later on. Um, to start with, we're going to look at using some functions we've seen already. So we know we can use minus one to print a standard out and then minus two to print a standard error. So we're going to create two functions using these and we're simply going to print dot z dot p. So if we just remind ourselves what is dot z dot p, it's our system time. I'm going to print that as a string and then we're going to join that on to this um, message that either says info or error and then we're going to join on x where x will be the argument we're passing. So if we define a function called say hello and we're going to run the function out within that, passing it first of all this string hello and then x and then x will become this input parameter to say hello whenever we decide to run it. So we're passing it a string Nicholas. So let's run and see what happens. So we get output .z.p as a string with info added on and then also hello Nicholas joined on because um, we're joining on that in here. Okay. And if we change this to error, for example, we would see that printed with the red banner instead. And um, note we get minus one and minus two returned with our standard out and standard error um, here. So we see minus two here. And then when we had standard out, we see minus one. Um, if we didn't want that, we could suppress it with a semicolon like here. We could also put our semicolon in the function above instead. So depending on what you want to do, either is fine. Now we can also use protected evaluation for logging and we've seen this at the end of the previous module. Um, so we can use our trap at operator, passing in the function, the parameters we want to run and then the function that we want to execute in the case that this function errors. So if we run say hello, first of all, so um, with a symbol, so this is here saying I'm trying to run this with a symbol rather than a string. You see, I get this evaluation error of type and that would halt my execution. But if I wrap it up in this trap at, you'll see what happens is I get um, my message printed to standard error so because we're using the error, error function we created above. And then it's also going to exit the process. So whenever I run this, it's actually going to exit this queue session that I'm running. So let's run this and see what happens. So you've seen first I got the red banner with that message and it's saying error running main type. And then it's also said my kernel has died, so I have to restart it. So if I hop over here and go kernel restart, I'm gonna to need to do that. So this exit here is actually exiting my current queue session. Okay. And we know if it worked okay, so say if we put back in here, some name, I need to remember to redefine say hello. Um, so once I pass it a string, which it's happy with, um, I get the function executing as before. So this part here again is only executed when the function errors. So depending on whether you want logging all the time, you might use minus one. Um, and then if you only want to log when there's errors, you might use protected evaluation. Okay, so we're gonna look at three example files that have been created for us already um, to just show some typical use cases of how you can do logging. So the first one is Q log example dot Q file. So if you want to head over to here, you'll see we've got these three files we're going to talk about now. So this is the first one. And you see we've got our out and our error function defined in here. And then we're using the exact same say hello function as before, and then we're running it here. And then we're going to use um, the dot z dot x and dot Q dot opt functions that we used in the previous video. I'm going to save that to a dictionary D and then we're going to do some execution control that we learned in the last module as well. So we're going to say if count of my dictionary is zero, then I want you to print a standard out that no parameter has been provided. And then at the end, I want you to say hello and then the first element of the dictionary um, and I'm indexing into my dictionary here looking for the name. And then I'm going to exit the script. Okay, so we're going to run this qlog example.q script. Um, this no hub command here is just saying run this in the background. Um, and then we're going to also redirect this to a new log file called mylog.txt. 
So we're able to redirect output in this fashion here, which is really useful as well. So if we just check above beforehand, we don't see any mylog.txt files. And then if we run this and hop back over here and hit refresh, we should see that has now appeared. So if we want to go check it in here, we see we've got our hello Nicholas, and then we've got the no parameter provided standard out message as well. And then we've got hello printed at the end. So all of this output has been printed to this mylog.txt file. Now, if we removed the redirect at the end and just simply ran the script, the output would just be printed here. And you can see, again, it's telling us hello, Nicholas, and no parameter provided. And then if we put in the parameter name that we're looking for, um, you see it's now giving us hello, Nicholas. It's not going into this piece here to do the no parameter provided because the count of D is no longer zero because we do have an input in here um, on the command line parameter. And then we're able to output hello joined with the first element of that dictionary D, which is Pierre. So that's why we're getting hello, Pierre. And then we're just saying we can also redirect to a text file like this as well. So instead of doing it to my log.txt, we can redirect to log1.txt. So if we refresh this again, so you've got a new file here, log1.txt, with that information in there. Okay, now let's look at our second example. Um, so in the previous example here, we just simply did a quick count on the input parameters and then decided to either send a message out or not. Um, in the next example, we're going to take this a step further and we're going to add a function called print product. So this is Q log example two. So if we hop into that, we'll see it looks the same as what I was sharing on the Jupyter notebook. So we've got our out and error functions as before. We're creating a print product function. So it's gonna print a standard out that the product is, and then we're gonna multiply the two input values and string them and join them on to that message. Then we're gonna capture our command line parameters as before and make them into a dictionary. And then we're gonna save A and B I'm going to be converting them here to longs because they're input as a string from the command line. So we need to convert them to a long here. We're using our cast that we've seen before. Then we're doing our count as before. So checking is, is this input here on the command line zero or not. And then this bit here is new as well. So we're doing our if else statement that we learned about in our execution control module. And we're going to do two checks at the start. So we're going to first say, is my first element null or is my second element null? And because I'm using or in the middle, um, it's going to say if either one of these is null, so if they're empty and not being passed in, um, then I want to print to standard error this message. So I'm going to say the type has been mismatched. Please provide a long integer value. And otherwise, if they're fine, I'm going to use the print product function in order to multiply them together. OK, so if we do the same thing we did before, and we just use um, no hop here with our system command to run that script. We're going to pass um, num1 and num2. You can see that the parameters we're looking for from the qlog example2 script. And they're going to redirect this to mylog2.txt this time. And these here um, variables three and four are correct. They are both already long, so it should be working okay. So if we go check out mylog2.txt over here, and click on that you can see that it seems to have worked okay so i'm printing out here first of all my d values you see we're printing that here which is as expected and then if we look in here we're also printing that information that the product is 12. so we're able to multiply three by four okay and then we're going to print that out here so that's getting to this point here at the end of my if else statement which allows me to do this bit so the final printout statement and then by comparison, if I pass something that I know is going to break, so instead of having a numeric value for the second one, I'm passing ABC. So let's run that and then hop over to my log 2.txt. And then you see now this has been overwritten. Um, and I now have got the same as before. So it's logging D, which is my command line parameters. And then instead of getting the info message, I'm getting the error message. And it's saying type mismatch. So that's this part, point down here. Okay, so the last um, example I want to show is using protected evaluation within our um, script to do logging. So 
instead of having um, this if else statement down the bottom, we're going to do something very similar, but we're going to use protected evaluation. So this is in our Q log example three script. Um, so in here you see, instead of the, I think before it was called print product, it was doing a multiplication. We're just going to do um, print a list. So till X, so whatever the numeric is here, it's going to print a list um, out and it's going to show that. And then I'm capturing my dictionary for my command line parameters as before. This all remains the same. This all remains the same. And then I'm going to show what A and B are here. And then I'm going to do my protected evaluation. So I'm going to try and print the list on A and print the list on B. So there's no if statement here. Both of these are going to try and execute. Um, if either of them error, we should get an error message. If neither of them error, we should just have the function executing as normal. Um, so let's have a go with that one. Pop back over to my lab text dot three. And you can see here, the first thing that's output is my dictionary as before, and then we're getting A and B. So in the, what I ran here was A was three and B was ABC. Those are being output here. And then the first one here is actually working. So I'm able to print my list A. Um, and then my second one here is throwing an error because ABC, I can't run till on ABC. That doesn't like that. Um, so you see I'm able to run till on three, which gives me zero one two, and then I get a domain arrow when I try and run till on ABC. Okay. Hopefully within that there's some helpful tips and tricks for you. Um, I know it might be a bit scary looking at these scripts and log files. Really all we're doing is combining all the things we learned in our previous modules, like all the way to print messages from our string manipulation module, um, everything we learned in our execution control when we're doing our if else and also protected evaluation. Um, and we're just combining it all in one script to, to put it all together and do some logging. Um, so try this exercise. Um, so we want you to write a script x2.q and we want you to uh, create functions that print logs to standard error and standard out. And then we want you to use protected evaluation to multiply two lists together and then create these three lists within the script. Okay, so have a go with that exercise. Um, I hope you enjoyed this module and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.